uh, anyway, we're glad to have you, Chad. Look forward to your presentation and uh, welcome. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Is this working now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let me just come straight to the point. How many of you actually understand blockchain technology, have even decent understanding what it is all about? One, two, two and a half, right? Okay, say it again. Two and a quarter. Okay, two and a quarter, okay. So uh, how many of you really understand blockchain technology? Okay, at least there was those two people who raised their hands. If tough questions come my way, I know who to go to, right? I, I will just reframe it as discussion rather than a talk. Okay, so uh, I need to look at my own slides somehow. Okay, so apparently blockchain is a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, let, let me not just blindly go through that slide. I will not read my slides out. My whole goal is that Blockchain technology is actually simple enough, but not so simple that you can watch a five minute uh, crash tutorial video on YouTube and understand it, okay? So I myself watched quite a few videos, and at the end of the video, if somebody asked me anything about it, I barely understood anything, okay? So I have to admit that. So I had to go through the hard way, uh, but it was great fun learning, and. Uh, what I hope is that this actually helps you. My goal is not to cover everything. I might skip through some slides, but I hope that by end of this talk, you will actually understand what blockchain technology is all about, how it works, everything. I will try to simplify it as much as possible. Okay, so it is, uh, what does it say, technology and distributed and decentralized? These two core terms define blockchain technology, distributed and decentralized, okay? Then we will cover what is cryptography, okay? By the way, my talk is divided into two portions. One portion is very high level, and in the second portion, uh, we will dig a bit deeper into blockchain technology. Okay, so now, uh, what is distributed uh, and decentralized? I would rather present it as three cases. This, the first case is about centralized IT infrastructure, which would mean something like you have your own computer. By the way, do I need to discuss these things in detail or can I move on? Do people understand what is distributed and decentralized? Okay, I will move quickly. Okay, so centralized is where it's one server. If that server crashes, everything is gone, okay? Everything, all the entire data and information is stored at one place. Okay, next is, uh, uh, Case two is distributed IT infrastructure. In this case, let's say you are a bank, okay? And you have, you cannot afford to store all your data at one place. You need to replicate it at multiple places. And whenever there is an update to your database, the same update takes place across several servers so that you can keep multiple copies, right? Okay, uh, and that is how you distribute your data so that uh, even if one server fails, you can utilize other servers, okay? And you can still back up, you back your data up. So that is what distributed IT infrastructure is. And then uh, decentralized, let's go back to our example of a bank again. A bank might have a distributed database, but it is not decentralized. What I mean by that is that the control of the entire data is still with one entity, right? So it is centralized but distributed. And where blockchain comes in is that uh, it is decentralized, which means that the whole ecosystem is not controlled by any one entity. Let us take the famous example of Bitcoin. Do you know who controls Bitcoin? Nobody, okay? Bitcoin is absolutely open source. People around the world are key participants in the operations of Bitcoin, okay? And, and it is decentralized because no one entity can make all the calls. Everything is based on consensus among various participants that nobody know who they are, okay? Any questions so far? So far so good? Okay, so before we go too much further, I think it is discussed in later slides as well. Uh, 
blockchain and Bitcoin are not one and the same. Blockchain is the underlying technology. And by the way, in this talk, we'll spend more time on Bitcoin. Okay, and there are other Ethereum, we'll spend less time, and there are more things that come up. So now, when Bitcoin started, blockchain and Bitcoin were used almost like interchangeably because Bitcoin was the only application of blockchain technology. It's like saying operating system and Windows 10. Operating system is blockchain technology, Windows 10 is an instance of that technology. Then there could be other operating systems. Now, 2008, this person called Satoshi Nakamoto proposed a decentralized electronic uh, currency called Bitcoin, and he wrote a white paper. And I believe that not, uh, I believe many of your academics, right? That white paper that he published, I guarantee that not a single academic journal would publish that paper, okay? We are not open to such radical ideas, <laughs> right? But if you look at the impact it had had, I guarantee that you can take 20 uh, editions of absolute top journals. The impact it has had is more than that. So it's just that when a, when a powerful idea comes up, you cannot stop it. So now, what he did is that uh, this person is believed to be from Japan. And this person was involved in development of uh, Bitcoin for a while, then he disappeared. Several people have claimed to be Satoshi Nakamoto, but nobody really knows who he is. Okay, so now, the idea he wrote in a paper, and within one or two years, uh, he actually implemented the idea of uh, Bitcoin. So now, uh, there are four essential characteristics Distributed, we discussed already, irreversible. What it means is that, let's say, uh, it sometimes happens in your bank accounts where a bank might accidentally put a million dollars in your account. It has happened before. You might have heard of such instances, right? Okay, but then they reverse it. They say it was an accident, whatever, not here. It's, nothing is an accident. Once a certain event takes place, you cannot undo it, okay? Next thing is it's transparent. Uh, by that, if this was a classroom, I would have shown that. You can go right now on uh, blockchain.com or there are several websites and see the entire history of Bitcoin. It is 100% transparent, okay? So there is no secrecy in terms of transparency there, but you still have privacy because you see all the transactions that have ever taken place, but you don't really know who were those people who were engaged in those transactions. And consensual is that uh, any transaction that takes place, the whole Bitcoin ecosystem will have to, uh, or at least the nodes, uh, before I use the word nodes, let me just clarify it. There are uh, certain entities that participate in this Bitcoin ecosystem, they are called nodes. These are the ones who actually uh, have to agree among themselves. You can participate as with using your phone on Bitcoin, but you will, you're not powerful enough to be a node, right? There are warehouses of computers and servers. Uh, those, are, those are the ones who actually act as nodes. So now, the nodes have to agree on every transaction. And how this works, I will discuss in the next uh, PowerPoint slide. So now, important definitions. Uh, I think I discussed most of these. Uh, nodes are the ones that actually broadcast transactions. They approve transactions taking place and they create blocks. How the whole thing works is in the next part of my talk. Okay, how many times do I say that it is distributed and decentralized? Okay, okay, so one key point is that uh, because it is decentralized and distributed, even if one com node completely crashes out, everything is still fine. Now, if you want to become a node, you better have very powerful computer and you will, once you join the network, you will download the entire data. And eventually when transactions are approved, blocks are created, you will have the same update on your system, okay? So blockchain relies heavily on cryptographic techniques, and that is the reason why, uh, let's say Bitcoin is called uh, cryptocurrency, right? Because the reason it is called cryptocurrency is because every single, there is no, Think like Bitcoin that can be accessed. Okay, it is you cannot touch it, and it is virtual currency in a sense that it is 
By the way, you don't even send Bitcoins to anybody. You do exchange currency, but you actually, okay, I think I will discuss this also. There is no such thing that this person has five Bitcoins. There's no such thing like that. How it works is that if you claim to have five Bitcoins, you need to show that there were at least as many transactions, at least good enough number of transactions where a Bitcoin was sent to you. Okay, it's not like a traditional ledger where uh, you can open and see how many Bitcoins you have. It's only you who know how many transactions are pointed to your addresses. Okay, uh, I'll discuss originally, this I think I discussed all those things. There, uh, I discussed the whole thing already. Public versus permission blockchain. I will barely spend any time on this. Actually, I've, I will spend time on this right now and call it good. So, uh, blockchain at this moment can be uh, described into three portions. Blockchain 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. Okay? And Bitcoin was blockchain 1.0, which is just a cryptocurrency, nothing more. There's nothing more to Bitcoin other than it being a currency. Then the second generation of uh, blockchain came about with Ethereum and other systems where you can actually have smart contracts, okay? And they were beyond just cryptocurrency, okay? And the third generation came in where, uh, by the way, uh, Ethereum, the blockchain 1.0 and 2.0 are completely public, okay? 3.0 is where uh, private and or private or permission in, in this context they both mean the same thing where uh, permission blockchains came about where you need to be a participant in that ecosystem to be a part of that blockchain so walmart has its own blockchain system where you need to be a walmart supplier or a customer to uh, or a business partner in that sense 